Welcome to the Modex Consulting presentation on production bombs in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. We're going to be taking a look at the process of creating production bombs or production bills of material. Um, then we're going to be looking at an example with multiple assembly steps and a couple different ways of handling that. We're going to first look at one with separate subassembly and how that affects planning and production orders. Then we're going to look at the phantom bomb feature as an alternate way of handling it and how that affects your planning and production process. Here it is in Business Central. I'm in the production planner role center. We're going to be taking a look at several items involved. So in this case, we have multiple finished goods and raw materials. The first two lines are the finished goods we've installed to the customer, some exciting chairs in black and blue. We have several raw materials down here. This is the seat without fabric, and we have to, of course, put a different color of fabric on. So this gives a little bit of complexity, but obviously this is a simple example. The bottom two items here are raw materials, some wheels and the base without wheels. This line right here represents the subassembly. And we're going to take a look at a couple different ways of handling this subassembly through production bombs and phantom bombs. Starting with the item for the finished good, I've already set this one up here. I've specified that this is replenished through a production order. I have defined our production bomb here. Uh, oh, by the way, I took out all the routings, and so there's no sort of scheduling activities, stuff like that required, just trying to keep stuff nice and simple. And similarly, our planning side of things is extremely simple here, no large batches or anything like that. We have the production bomb here. We'll take a look at that. So this one is a completed production bomb. And we had to manufacture this chair. We need the seat without fabric, some fabric, and this subassembly. I have brought this subassembly in as an item. And we'll be taking a look at a couple of options here. This is a, bringing it in as an inventory item, which means that there will be a separate, separate subassembly, separate production order required to do this. So this is, works best for some manufacturing processes, but we'll be looking at a couple of options here. If I hop ahead to the next one, this production bomb uh, has been created but has not been filled in. So I just, I just typed in the description before starting recording and unit of measure code here. Uh, the unit of measure code for the chairs is just an individual piece. Um, I'm keeping stuff simple with no sort of batches, mixer quantities, cutting patterns, things like that here. So we would have fill in various quantities and stuff to create a new bomb. We want the, uh, let me actually get the right color fabric here. A couple meters of that, and we'll do the same thing for this chair as we did for the other one. We're bringing in the subassembly as an item. Certifying that to get that completed. And I've already gone ahead and in our items defined the production bombs as well. Um, just so we can see the, the process without having to watch me click and create every single production bomb. If I take a look at our planning process, uh, I've already created a sales order for these selling for the end of the week, so we can just jump ahead to actually doing this. And I'm going to just uh, jump to the chase here and do a quick calculation of both MPS and MRP. Um, if your version of Business Central doesn't let you click that, that's actually a setting I should point out for you. In Manufacturing Setup, on uh, the Planning tab, there is an option here to do a combined MPS MRP run. I'll let you do both at once. Um, this may or may not be the right choice for your business, but just sort of wanted to point that out because that's not the default setting here. So doing a quick calculate. Oh, by the way, I also brought in some raw materials in advance, so we didn't have to look at a bunch of purchase stuff, just focusing on production as well. So we have three production orders suggested. My sales order happens to have four of this color, 12 of this other color. And the planning process from Business Central has suggested a third production order for a 16 assembled basis. Not items you'd ship to the customer directly, but you would need four plus 12 equals 16 to actually build up in advance. You can see this checkbox over here. 
the first two are listed as MPS orders. They're based off the sales orders or would be forecasts or other possibilities there for MPS. This lack of a checkbox on the third line means this is MRP. This is fulfilling your internal demand for a subassembly. If I was to go ahead and create these production orders, we would see that they would call in specific items and so on. In this case, matching our bill of material. Behind the scenes, it is bringing in all the correct items. If I hop back to this item here, when we were looking at before, and take a look at my structure. We can see the structure here consists of this black chair, the seed and fabric you saw me add, and the assembled base. And then there's the details. Notice this is indented. Uh, in a more complex example, you may have multiple levels of indentation. But basically, we're seeing these bold lines, and this structure screen here is expanding it out so you can see it in one place. So again, this is a separate production process. You end up with a separate production order. You will have to report separate production uh, transactions against it, separate consumption and output um, going through this process. Uh, if this matches your production process, you've got a physically separate area and you would make 16 at once as a batch. That's fantastic, exactly what you want. However, in a lot of cases, it isn't. Um, perhaps this assembled base with wheels is how your engineering uh, designed the product and it makes sense from an engineering standpoint but from the manufacturing you do it all as one step in which case you do not want this breakdown so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at an alternate way of handling this assembled item here this sub assembly um, and the way we're going to do it is to not create it as an inventory item so it actually would not need to create it here instead in our production bill of material we're just going to make one change. And I'm actually adding this as a fourth line just so I can talk about the, the differences here, or actually the more similarities, uh, rather than trying to uh, just type over the, the third line, which would be more normal to do if in real life. The only difference between these two lines is this here, item and production bomb. This brings it in as an inventory item. This brings it in as a phantom bomb. The engineering spec shows it as a separate bomb and it is pulled in separately. In this case, we are not going to have a separate production order. It's one person that is going to do the assembly process. Just leave that third line to, now that we've talked about the difference between them. And bear with me a moment as I do the change to the uh, other color of chair as well. So we now have the build and materials updated. If I hop back into this item and take a look at our structure, this looks different than what we had before. Before we had an additional bolded line talking about the subassembly. So in this case, even though our bill of material here, oops, close that a bit too early, our bill of material here only has, has three lines, our structure here pulls in four lines, four raw materials, because it has expanded the phantom bomb to include these two items here. If I go through my planning process, no changes to sales orders, demand in any case, just doing a recalculate here. I now only have two lines here. Tell them to make four of this color, 12 of this, their MPS, just as we saw before, but the third line with the subassembly has disappeared. So basically the fact that the engineering design production bomb has disappeared from the production standpoint, your production process is a single step. If I was to actually go ahead and create these as, let's do firm planned. And we would take a look at the production orders here. We'd be able to see that components here shows all four, material requisition, paperwork, et cetera, would show all four for that specific thing. So in this case, the bill of material contains one line, gets expanded into two um, during that process. 
Both are completely valid ways of handling your production bill of material setup. The best one, of course, is going to depend on your physical manufacturing process, how you assign work, how you deliver materials to the line and so on. But I did want to cover the details in Business Central and uh, so that showing that it can support both ways for you and the uh, pros and cons between them. So. And one last thing I want to point out here. The current production bomb process that I have set up right here with this production bomb is a phantom bomb. In my list of items here, this particular line right there does not actually need to exist. The production bomb does, but we do not need to have an inventory item. So it does let you reduce your inventory items if you have a complex uh, bill of material structure with multiple layers and uh, drawings and stuff like that. So hopefully you found that useful. If you have any questions about production bombs or phantom bombs, please reach out to Modex Consulting. We'd be happy to assist and provide more information. Thank you.